Now, losing a pet, it's difficult. It's hard on the parents, it's hard on the kid, it's really hard on the whole family. A tribute or memorial garden is a nice way to remember a pet. Learn to make a garden later this month. Pause to Angels will teach you how. That's right. And Sheree Fry joins us this morning. She brought in Savannah yeah. along with her. Hi. Good, to see, good to see you again. How's Savannah Hi, doing? Anna. She is doing good. A little she, relaxed this morning. She's very chill. <laughs> this one is. is. We uh, like how her. Old is she a lot. five? She's five, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you love pets. I do. And it comes through so clearly in the work that you do. We've talked about your services before, a range of them, but maybe we'll, we'll focus on pre planning to start this morning. Why Absolutely. is that valuable for families? It is actually one of the most responsible things a family can do um, and help prepare for that inevitable. Too many times they're, they're stuck with questions of what do I do? Mm -hmm. well, I think families, they don't really know where to turn uh, right. at that point. So how can, it, how can your services help the families? Um, it will, with the pre-planning, it can prepare them financially. It can help them prepare the children, the other pets in the home. Um, there's things that they didn't even know that they could do, options that are available that they didn't know they have. What about the process and how do you make it comfortable instead of a sort of a sad process to go through preparing to lose well, a pet? Well, it's definitely not an easy occurrence to mm -hmm. sit down and visit. I mean, nobody wants to think about it or talk about it, but, you know, I, I work with them sharing their stories first. and. Then we kind of elaborate into some, some personalization, mm -hmm. um, asking questions, mm -hmm. things like that. One of the things so. you mentioned uh, in, in past visits to the show is in-home euthanasia. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's that process like? Well, it's providing in-home care for helping that pet transition from life to death, um, a comfort, comfortable, secure, private place. Mm -hmm. Um, there removes any anxieties with the pet from the car ride to the mm -hmm. veterinarian's office. Mm -hmm. So it's just a very compassionate way. And then how does it provide care for the families? Well, like myself, I go in with the veterinarian and, you know, I'm a, a certified pet loss grief companion. Um, so I'm there to, to help walk them through the initial shock and journey. Um, which is extremely difficult, mm -hmm. um, and just somebody there to hold their hand. Yeah, what can families do ahead of time to prepare, I guess, for that transition uh, to make it easier? Um, the biggest thing is probably to decide where they want to, be, to perform that at. Mm -hmm. Some choose a special room in the home, maybe their backyard, even a park. Mm -hmm. We've done those. Um, you know, have some little treats available, you know, for the sedative shot, which helps with that. Um, decide on family and friends that they want there. Mm -hmm. Maybe they would want to Skype in. So. Everyone's different. Yes, Every family's absolutely. Different, but it's nice to have you there to, to guide them through it so that it's a meaningful experience instead of something they look back on and go, boy, I wish we could have done better. Um, mm -hmm. how, how are you different from veterinarians? I think our viewers who are new to this mm -hmm. idea may wonder about that. Absolutely. Well, um, Pets Angels is the first and only total end-of-life care center for pets. Um, you know, I do come in with the veterinarian being the only pet loss professional in the state, and you know, the veterinarian. So you've got two professionals coming into your home. Mm -hmm. um, once the pet passes, I take them into my care, and they are in my care from beginning until end. Mm -hmm. um, they rest on a casket with a blanket. They're not put in bags or freezers. Yeah. Um, everything is very, very personalized, and then there's support following. Yeah, you mentioned you're the only one in the state that does this type of work. Um, where did you get the concept from? Or, uh, did you see it in other parts of the country? No, not really. It was something that I dreamed up um, with the loss of my dog, Shades. And then as I started work building my business plan, I learned that there were other people out there wanting the same things as I. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there are similar facilities like mine, but not exactly like mm -hmm. mine. Mm -hmm. sure. the, the 28th we mentioned as we were starting this conversation yes. that you've got a neat event that's coming. Mm -hmm. What do you have planned? I am so excited for mm -hmm. this event. Um, it's how to create a tribute or a memorial garden um, working with the potting shed. So um, kind of teach floral ideas from uh, spring to fall, rocks and fountains to incorporate in, mm -hmm. some other special things and just kind of really want to point out the pet doesn't have to be deceased. Um, just kind of an area of, of reflection in mm -hmm. your yard really can be a beautiful addition. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's special and maybe this picture will give you some inspiration. Maybe mm -hmm. you've seen others before that have inspired you, but instead of it just saying, well, my pet's passed away, now what? Because mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean they leave your heart. They mm -hmm. don't leave your mind when they leave the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so just like we would for a human, uh, mm -hmm. this is a nice way to continue to remember uh, your, your dogs, your cats. Um, the event again is on March 28th, but then we know many of you are also going to want to contact Cherie. If not today, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a year or two years from now, you just never know. Uh, but to learn more about pre-planning, um, in-home euthanasia, any of the services offered by Paws to Angels, we encourage you to swing by pawstoangels.net. Thanks, Sheree. Good Thank to see you. you. Nice to you see too. you in Savannah. Yeah, good to see Savannah. <laughs> I really appreciate your time. Oh, chilling thank out the you. whole time. Yes. Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I like her style. All right, still ahead, wild guide Stephanie Arney. She's not alone, though. We've heard she's got as many as like seven creatures oh, with her. Wow. Yeah, and before uh, we share our final four picks, we're going to get Christian Leitner's plus the team he thinks could be wearing glass slippers this March. Could we see one of them coming from Omaha?